Hey everybody, today I'm bringing you another alkyd oil painting video. I'm going to show you what I typically use when I'm painting with alkyds. The line of paint I use is Griffin Alkyds from Windsor Newton. I also have my handy dandy brush cleaning tin filled with odorless mineral spirits. I've also got my design drawn on a 12 by 12 birch wood panel for my painting surface. All right, let's mix some values together. I'm mixing all my paint with the addition of a drop or two of OMS, in short for odorless mineral spirits, to loosen up the paint and have it flow more freely. I'm mixing my paint on a glass palette. I love these palettes as the gray background helps me judge my colors and my values more easily and the cleaning the glass palette can be done simply by using a paint scraper you can get from the hardware store. It's helpful to have an assortment of brushes as well. I use synthetic hog hair, golden tacklon, and a variety of mop brushes, which are just soft, fluffy brushes I use to blend. Before I begin painting, I add a small amount of oil to my painting surface to give the paint something slick to move on. You don't need a lot, just a very small amount. After I pour it onto my painting surface, I take a paper towel and I vigorously rub it into the surface, making sure that I can get it into all the nicks and crannies. And then I take a dry paper towel and also try to rub off as much as I can, because you really don't need a lot. And when I stress that like very thin layer of it, just enough for the paint just to kind of move a little bit more freely. In this painting, I want to focus on painting the image in black and white first. This takes the brain work out of dealing with color values out of the equation. I plan on layering color on later. This first layer, I will focus on blocking in the values and blending them out. I'm not looking to add texture just yet. In oil painting, you have to follow a few rules. One important one you want to follow is the fat over lean rule. You want your bottom layers to dry faster than layers that are on top. The term fat, when we're talking about fat over lean, is referring to the oil in the paint. So the oil is the fat and it dries really slow. So you always want the topmost layer to dry the slowest so the bottom layers can dry the quickest. The reason for that is if you have a slow drying layer underneath a layer of paint that dries faster, it will form a crust over the bottom layer. Since the bottom layer is still wet and flexible, it will make the top layer crack as it dries. My paint mixture has been thinned with OMS, thus making this layer my thinnest layer. The consecutive layers, I will only use paint from the tube or paint mixed with additional oil to ensure that it dries slower than the bottom layer. After starting with the background, I moved on to blocking in my areas of darkest value. After adding more values, I will try to blend them into a gradient. It's helpful to blend as you go as the paint does get tacky rather quickly. The manufacturers say you have about a four to eight hour working window before it starts to dry, but I find that window is much shorter, so I blend as I go. After I block in my darkest areas, I just keep moving up the value scale and look for large areas to fill in. 
I'm being very careful about painting the brush strokes in the direction of the apple's texture. This will help me later in creating those details. As you paint, you may notice the consistency starts to get a little tacky. You can fix this by simply adding a couple drops of OMS to loosen it up again, maybe like one or two drops, or oil if you are in later layers. However, using the tackiness of the paint can be helpful in dry brushing and texture later. Once I have all my values blended into gradients, I will start to create some texture and clean up any wonky edges. As I start to add small spots and lines to create the texture of the apple, I'm also gently softening them with my mop brush. Pay close attention to your hand pressure too. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to soften and overbrushing can blend them into the wet surface below and disappear.
next day, my surface was dry and I was ready to continue on. This time, I'm introducing some glazing to enhance my shadows and highlights. To make this transparent layer called a glaze, I mix paint with a little bit more oil. I'm currently using Walnut Alkid Oil from M. Graham. This oil has the addition of the alkid medium so it speeds up the dry time. The more oil you add, the more transparent your paint will become. So play around with your ratios to get the desired result. Griffin Alkids are slightly transparent anyway, so I find I don't need as much oil to get a nice glaze. I'm using a soft bristled Taclon brush to lay my glazes down as the synthetic hog hair brushes are a bit too scratchy. I will then blend it with my fluffy brush. The second paint layer will also soften the textured layer below it and enriching its value. All the layers stacked on each other will allow light to play around and illuminate your painting, giving it more depth than if you were to paint everything in a single layer. The beauty of using alkyd oils is that your surface is typically dry the very next day, thanks to the alkyd resin that the paint is formulated with. As you're painting with the alkyds and you're sort of progressing day by day, and you're not really sure what formula you might have used if you added oil to your paint or if you added thinner to your paint, you're not sure what drying speed your previous layer has, don't overthink it. Just let it dry. Alkyd dries very quickly, so when in doubt, just let the painting dry, come back the next day, and continue painting. I decided to mix up a variety of colors to add onto my apples. I'm mixing them with the consistency of a glaze, but also using some more opaque applications as well.
I started with the background to give myself some time to get into the groove and feel out where this painting wanted to take me. After blending the background out with a large mop brush, I started to let the colors play. I first envisioned this painting to be more realistic, using more reds and greens, you know, typical traditional apples, but the painting decided that it wanted to be more abstract, so I just let it happen. Funny how that works. You're probably wondering why I just didn't paint with the colors from the beginning. As I previously mentioned, it's easier to focus on the values in black and white first than add color on later. I don't always use this method, but sometimes it's nice to take it slow and methodical, even if it ends up being a little abstract in the end. The black and white underpainting, also called a grisaille, will actually help support the colors on top. The two being layered together gives the painting depth. A lot of traditional artists have used this method, so if you look up old masters paintings, a lot of them used underpaintings and then glazed color on top. And that just makes the painting look so much more realistic.
day four of painting. My surface is dry and I'm back at it again with more glazes. This time I'm using some dioxazine purple to really deepen the shadows. Dioxazine purple is a transparent paint and it's just very, very strong as far as the tinting strength of it. When you're glazing, it's more helpful to use a paint that is transparent versus one that is opaque. You'll get more richness from the color and having that transparency so you can see the layers below it. When you're glazing, you want to be able to partially see the layer beneath it. As I was playing with my color placements, I did end up losing a lot of the texture I painted previously. I should have been a little more careful with my mixes, but on the other hand, I like the new direction this painting was going in. I did end up putting some more texture back into the layers. Since this is my last layer, there really isn't a whole lot of work that I'm doing to it. I'm just kind of going in and strengthening my shadows and adding some bits of color here and there, adding some texture back in and just kind of seeing what else I could do, what other colors I could add. Again, as I'm laying down my glazes, I'm still using my mop brush to blend them out very nicely. I kind of really like to go for the airbrushed look. I do have a little bit of some geometric paint strokes mixed in with it. I kind of like to have a little um, mix and match with the brush strokes. Since this painting's pretty much done, I'm just also going around cleaning up edges, making sure that I don't have any weird wonky lines or things that just stick out and look amiss. As you'll see at the end of the video, I did end up adding some magenta to my shadows, which I really think helped give it a nice punch of color. Um, magenta is probably one of my favorite colors to do a lot of tinting with or glazing. It's just such a strong color and, and it's practically pink, which is one of my favorite colors. So I'll let this painting dry and it'll be dry tomorrow, but I, before I varnish it, I, I have heard that you can varnish Alkit oil paintings as soon as it's dry to touch. I still prefer to leave my paintings dry for about a month or so. I noticed that if I'm doing a lot of glazing that the glaze layers because they have more oil will be more tacky for a longer period of time. I have another painting that I just finished recently and it's been dry for about three days but it still feels a little tacky because I did a lot of last minute glazes. So I'm gonna let it sit and cure and just hang out on my easel for a few weeks and just keep touching it to see how it's progressing and once I am confident that it's like really dry I'll then varnish it with some Gamvar.
All right, so here I am just adding some last minute highlights to the stems of the apple and also highlights on the sides of the apples. And I think we have a finished painting. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot. If you have questions, please leave a comment below and I'm happy to answer. And hopefully I'll see you back when I have another video up. Feel free to check out my other videos as well on my YouTube channel. Hit like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.